name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Lovely to see you all today. Glad to see that you survived the heat wave uh, from yesterday. Uh, and a very warm welcome to our children's choir who are leading us in our singing. Great to have you and your families uh, with us, leading us in our singing today. So it's a double celebration. Not only is it Father's Day, of course, tomorrow, but today we are celebrating the Feast of Corpus Christi, the Feast of the Body and the Blood of Christ. And in this feast, we think again about the gift of the Eucharist, the gift that we celebrate every time we gather for Mass, remembering what Jesus did with the disciples at the first Mass, at the Last Supper, when he took bread, took wine, blessed and broke it, and it became his body and his blood. As we hear St. Paul telling us in our second reading, until the Lord comes every time you eat this bread and drink this cup, you are proclaiming his death. So as we gather in the Lord's name, as we give thanks that we are able to celebrate this Mass freely, think about our fellow Catholics across the world who don't have the freedoms and the liberties that we enjoy. And we pray for them that they are going to be able to uh, celebrate the sacraments just as we are doing tonight. But we also think about our own lives. Think about what Jesus did when he went to the cross and took away our sins. But we also know that sadly, in our lives, we still make mistakes, we still do things that we know that we shouldn't, and when we do that, we not only harm our relationship with the Lord, but we often hurt those who love and care for us. For those times when we have sinned and we have placed ourselves um, away from God and from our loved ones, we ask forgiveness now and we pray that the grace of this sacrament, the grace of the sacrament of the Eucharist, may heal us, strengthen us, and renew us. We say together, I confess. To Almighty God, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, blessed Mary ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, Forgive us our sins and bring us into everlasting life.
let us pray. O God, who in this wonderful sacrament have left us a memorial of your passion, grant us, we pray, so to revere these sacred mysteries of your body and blood, that we may always experience in ourselves the fruits of your redemption, who live and reign with God the Father in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of Genesis. Melchizedek, king of Salem, brought bread and wine. He was a priest of God most high. He pronounced this blessing. Blessed be Abraham by God most high, creator of heaven and earth. And blessed be God most high for handing over your enemies to you. And Abraham gave him a tithe of everything. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. First letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. This is what I receive from the Lord and in turn pass to you. That on the same night that he was betrayed, the Lord Jesus took some bread and thanked God for it and broke it. And he said, this is my body, which is for you. Do this as a memorial of me. In the same way, he took the cup after supper and said, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Whenever you drink it, do this as a memorial of me. Until the Lord comes, therefore, every time you eat this bread and drink this cup, you are proclaiming his death. The word of the Lord.
Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus made the crowds welcome and he talked to them about the kingdom of God and he cured those who were in need of healing. It was late afternoon when the twelve came to him and they said, Send the people away. They can go to the villages and the farms round about to find lodging and food, for we are in a lonely place. He replied, Give them something to eat yourselves. But they said, We have no more than five loaves and two fish, unless we are to go ourselves and buy food for all of these people. For there were about 5,000 men. But he said to his disciples, Get them to sit down in parties of about 50. They did so and made them all sit down. Then he took the five loaves and the two fish, raised his eyes to heaven, and said the blessing over them. Then he broke them and handed them to his disciples to distribute among the crowd. They all ate as much as they wanted, and when the scraps remaining were collected, they filled twelve baskets. The Gospel of the Lord. The intense heat that we've been experiencing over the last few days reminds me of the time back in 2011 when I was the Darsus and Youth Chaplain and I went with a group of young people to Madrid in Spain for the World Youth Day. For those of you who haven't experienced a World Youth Day, I suppose the best way to describe it is that it's like a Catholic version of the Glastonbury Festival combined with the World Cup. In Madrid, it was estimated that there were over a million pilgrims from across the world. And as you can imagine, with those numbers, the logistics of moving people across the city proved to be a major headache for the organizers. The centerpiece of World Youth Day is the Papal Mass. The vestments that I'm wearing were created especially for that Mass. And so it was decided that in Madrid, the Mass would be held in a disused airfield outside of the city, the only area big enough to accommodate the huge numbers who wanted to attend. There was a catch, however. You couldn't just turn up on the day. Instead, you needed to arrive at the site the day before in order to guarantee that you had a place near to the stage where the Mass was going to be celebrated by the Holy Father. And so this is how we found ourselves, gathered in a disused airfield in 40 degree heat, along with hundreds of thousands of fellow pilgrims, waiting patiently for the Papal Mass to begin the following day. The temperature was so hot that the local fire brigade were driving up and down the airfield with their water hoses, hosing down the pilgrims in order to try to keep them cool. In the evening, the plan was for Pope Benedict to lead a holy hour and prayer vigil. But after hours of scorching heat, something remarkable happened. It began to rain. And it wasn't just a little bit of rain. It was a full-on deluge. Somebody had obviously been praying too hard. We were all convinced that the holy hour would be cancelled. But instead, right on cue, we saw Pope Benedict come onto the stage, expose the Blessed Sacrament, and then, instead of going to find shelter from the rain, he went down on his knees and prayed in silence before the consecrated host. Immediately, all of the pilgrims in the field dropped to their knees and did the same. And suddenly the sounds of a million voices were silenced as we directed all of our attention towards Jesus Christ in the Blessed Sacrament. This was one of the most powerful moments I have ever experienced in my life. And it brought home to me just how important the Eucharist is in connecting me with God and in connecting us as a community of believers. The feast that we're celebrating today, the Feast of the Body and the Blood of Christ, was established in the 13th century in order for us to focus our attention on the real presence of Jesus in the Eucharist. And it still retains that purpose today. On this day, the church makes us stop what we're doing, sit or maybe kneel down, and consider the miracle of God's presence in the Holy Eucharist. As we heard Jesus declaring in the Gospel acclamation, I am the living bread which has come down from heaven. Anyone who eats this bread 
will live forever. Whatever we do, we should never forget that the Eucharist is above all a celebration of God's love for us, a gift that he has given to us, offering himself as food to satisfy our material and our spiritual hunger. And because of this, the Eucharist should never be taken for granted. Instead, every Mass is an invitation for us to give ourselves as completely as possible to the Lord and to surrender ourselves to the power of his love. It's for this reason that the word Eucharist in Greek literally means thanksgiving. It is our thanksgiving to God for the gift that he gives to us in Holy Communion. So, dear friends, I invite you to stand with me now as we profess our faith in the words of the Lord. We say together, I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things, visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became him. For our sake, who was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. And I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Filled with a deep sense of gratitude and joy at the great gift given to us in the Eucharist, we approach our Heavenly Father with all of our regrets. We pray for our Holy Father and the leaders of the Church. Keep them true to their calling, open to God's will, and eager to serve Jesus Christ. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for all of the families in our parish who have children who are preparing for their first Holy Communion. May they be enriched in love and strengthened in faith. Lord, in your mercy. On this Father's Day, we pray for all fathers. May they be inspired by the example of St. Joseph in their love for their families. Lord, in your mercy. We pray that the generosity which Christ has shown to us in the Eucharist may be reflected in the care we show to the poor, the lonely, and the unwanted. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for the sick. May they experience Christ's peace and healing power. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for the dead. May they rest in peace in the company and friendship of Jesus. Lord, in your mercy. In a moment of silence, we pray for our own intentions. Lord, in your mercy. We ask for the prayers of Mary, the Mother of God, as we say, Hail Hail Mary, Mary, full of grace, the Lord Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Heavenly Father, grant that the unity that we share with you in the Eucharist may transform our lives so that we may become what we receive. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen.
Pray, friends, that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Grant your church, O Lord, we pray, the gifts of unity and peace, whose signs are to be seen in mystery in the offerings we here present through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For at the Last Supper with his apostles, establishing for the ages to come the saving memorial of the cross, he offered himself to you as the unblemished lamb, the acceptable gift of perfect praise. Nourishing your faithful by this sacred mystery, you make them holy, so that the human race, bounded by one world, may be enlightened by one faith and united by one bond of charity. And so we approach the table of this wondrous sacrament, so that, bathed in the sweetness of your grace, we may pass over to the heavenly realities here foreshadowed. Therefore, all creatures of heaven and earth sing a new song in adoration, and we, with all of the hosts of angels, cry out, and without end we acclaim. Sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks he broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more, giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith.
celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and the blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Alan, our Bishop, and all of the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. We pray especially in this Mass for the repose of the soul of Gwen Carrigan. Welcome her into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed Apostles, St. Peter, and all of the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him. O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours, for ever and ever. And so, dear friends, at the Saviour's command, formed by divine teaching, we dare to say together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation. But deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days. That by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you. My peace I give to you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign for ever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. We offer a nod or a bow of peace to each other as we greet each other as children of God. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb.
Let us pray. Grant, O Lord, we pray that we may delight for all eternity in that share in your divine life which is foreshadowed in the present age by our reception of your precious body and blood who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Could I ask you please to take your seats just for a few moments. So firstly, a very big thank you to our children's choir for leading our singing so beautifully. Each time they sing, they're getting stronger and stronger. And if you liked uh, the uh, singing in the Mass, they are going to be doing a short concert after this Mass, which you're very welcome to um, stay for. So if you'd like to stay for the concert, just remain in your seat, uh, and then we'll uh, do that after this Mass. Weekday Masses this week, 9.15am Monday, Wednesday and Friday. There isn't a parish Mass at 10.15am on Tuesday because we have the Requiem Mass for Josephine Murphy at 11am on Tuesday. Um, so please uh, keep her and her family in your prayers at this time. So no Tuesday morning Mass this week. Exposition of the Blessed Sacrament, that takes place as usual at 5pm on Sunday and we will be praying in the Rosary for an increase in reverence um, towards the Eucharist. And so it's lovely really spending that time in front of the Blessed Sacrament. So if you are uh, free at 5 o'clock on Sunday, do either come to the church or watch the, the live stream. Great way to celebrate the Feast of Corpus Christi, spending time in front of the Blessed Sacrament. Ask for your prayers, please, for the repose of the soul of one of our parishioners, Margaret Jeekins, who has died recently. Uh, we're waiting for Margaret's funeral arrangements uh, to be confirmed, but once they are, uh, we'll put those in the uh, newsletter. Also, we're looking at for more welcomers at all of the parish masses. So if uh, you are interested in doing that, it could be parents, children, um, you know, it doesn't matter how old you are, anyone can join the welcoming team at the weekend masses. If you would like to help with that, then do please get in contact with the parish office or speak to one of the existing welcomers and, uh, and we can uh, make that happen. Uh, no confessions uh, for the next two Saturdays, I'm afraid. I'm, I'm out and about uh, the next two Saturdays. So confessions will resume Saturday the 9th of July from 11 a.m. to 12 p.m. So as I was saying at the beginning of the Mass, tomorrow, of course, is Father's Day. So in advance of that, I'm going to ask um, dads, granddads, great-granddads, if you want to stand up for a special blessing. Don't be shy. There we go. Excellent. I haven't got any daffodils for you, I'm afraid, Dad, but I can give you a special blessing on this Father's Day. So let us pray for our fathers, grandfathers, and, and great-grandfathers. Heavenly Father, you entrusted your Son, Jesus Christ, the child of Mary, to the care of Joseph, an earthly father. Bless all of our fathers as they care for their families. Give them strength and wisdom, tenderness and patience. Support them in the work that they have to do, protecting those who look to them as we look to you for love and salvation, through Jesus Christ, our rock and defender. Amen. Let's all stand together now for the final lesson. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you all, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life.